Hello, this is Fridays with Brandon. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're doing well. And today, this is episode number 97. Can you believe it? 97 of Fluke Fridays. And what we're going to go over today is a little feature that very, very few people know about called a low pass filter. And I actually want to do a survey. I want to see everybody that watches it. If you can put a comment below, I'm curious if you've heard of this before this video or have not heard of it. If you've heard about it before, just type in the comments, heard of this. Or if you've not heard about it, say, haven't never heard of it before. Um, that'd be great. And then if you have a good experience using it before, give us that story below so other viewers can enjoy that as well. So this low pass filter, where is it? If you look right here, this little, um, next to the voltage, it, that little yellow indication um, that says low with a little line and a line down, uh, line over and then angled down, that is a low pass filter. And what is a low pass filter? Well, first, how do you initiate it? You're gonna push the function key and that's gonna initiate it. But what is a low pass filter? And that is designed, that feature is specifically designed for the output of VFDs, variable frequency drives, is what VFD stands for. And so if you're an industrial customer and you're doing anything with VFDs, you really should have a meter that has a low pass filter in it because otherwise, if you're measuring the voltage, if you're trying to troubleshoot a drive and you're measuring the voltage out of the drive, it will not match on the multimeter your reading will not match what the drive itself says it's putting out in voltage. And that can be very confusing. So um, I will later in the video, I'll kind of show a few models and review the different models that do have a low pass filter on it. So you know which ones uh, have that capability, both multimeters, an insulation tester, and some of our clamp meters. But I'm going to jump into, I'm going to turn this VFD that I have on. Um, next to me in the motor drive tub and I'm going to go ahead and show you the reading that you will get with a true RMS meter versus um, when you have the low pass filter on versus when you turn it off and you'll be able to see how it will match the screen the display the output voltage on the VFD versus the multimeter and then I'll show you what it looks like with a clamp meter that is not that's average responding and then I'll show you a clamp meter that has low pass filter built into it. So you're going to get to see all of those and, and the readings and how they match up with the voltage that's actually being put out of the drive. So hopefully that helps and uh, let's jump into it. Okay, what you can see here is my motor drive um, demo and I've got a multimeter with test leads plugged into the output of two different phases of the VFD. You can see on that display the volts coming out of the VFD according to the VFD. And now you can see the multimeter, uh, true RMS multimeter, the 87.5 Max reading without the low pass filter on at that 240 ish. And then I turned on the low pass filter and it's matching almost exactly within a volt or two. So it should give you more confidence. Again, I'll toggle it off and you'll see it will be more like that 240. So this, again, is a true RMS meter without the um, low-pass filter turned on and then with it turned on. What I'm about to hook up is an old 322 meter, and this meter has a, um average responding. It's an average responding meter, so it's going to be even further off because it's not true RMS. So you can see we're at 295, and it's still around 201 that the VFD believes it's putting out. The VFD might be off slightly, but it's not off uh, that much. Now we're about to hook on to another true RMS meter, but this one has a low pass filter built in, and it does not have the ability to turn it on or off. I'll talk more about that later, but you can see this matches like the 875 Max with the low pass filter turned on. I'm going to talk about the different meters that come with the low pass filter. Um, on them. So probably the most popular would be the 87.5 and you can see the little yellow function right there. So you hit the yellow function key and that's where you turn it on under the voltage AC. Same thing with the 87.5.2 or the 87.5 max which I showed in the video. You have function key right here low pass filter. 
if we go over to the 279 FC that comes with a thermal imager built into it, that is automatically on, so there's no function key. It's just always going to be on the low-pass filter on this one. So that, uh, this has a similar feature or function as our clamp meters, which it just always has the low-pass filter on, and I'll show you those models here in a second. And the other low-pass filter is going to be an insulation tester, which I've got bookmarked back here. So the 1587 FC 87 being it's built on the same chassis as the 87.5 has a, a low pass filter. So again, got to use the blue function key instead of a yellow function key on this one, but it'll change it to low pass filter. Now, if you're looking at clamp meters, there's actually quite a few clamp meters that come with the low pass filter on them. And if you look right here at this line, low pass filter, and you can see the 375 FC through the 378 FC and the 381 have the low pass filter as well as the 355 and the 353. I said that in reverse order, sorry. So in conclusion, just remember that the 279 FC, the thermal imaging uh, camera in the multimeter, those will, the uh, low pass filter is always on, as well as with all the clamp meters, it's always on. So it's not a function key. It's not something you turn on and off. But I hope that's helpful. And I think it is a very unique thing to Fluke. I don't know that any other competitors have it. If I'm wrong on that, leave that in the comments as well. But I don't think anybody else has that. So if you are working on VFDs, this is a really important feature to use and make sure you're getting the meter that can help you take all the measurements you need as you work around the VFD so you don't get these weird readings that you can't trust. So anyways, have a great weekend. Don't forget, if you have watched more than three of my videos, don't forget to subscribe and uh, stay safe. Bye.